We are pausing our coverage of the widower murder retrial to quickly turn to the death of Rachel Morin. Morin is the mother of five whose body was found on a popular trail in Maryland earlier this month. The Harford County Sheriff's Office is holding a press conference to release new details, including information about a potential suspect. So let's go there live now. Hi everyone, good evening. Uh, I just want to apologize for the rescheduling. We had a lead come in at 3 o'clock that we needed to run down before we did this press conference. As of right now, that lead hasn't uh, panned out for us, but we're still out there investigating it. So that's why we had to postpone this uh, press conference. So first off, I just want to start off by saying thank you for coming out tonight. I am Colonel William Davis, Chief Deputy of the Harford County Sheriff's Office. I know this briefing comes in late in the day, but, but last night we received critical pieces of information and our detectives have been working throughout the night and today, running down our new leads. Once the new evidence came to light, Sheriff Gaylor was adamant that we needed to inform our community as soon as possible, and that's why we're here tonight. As you know, since Saturday, August 5th, 12 days ago, the Harford County Sheriff's Office has been working around the clock to get justice for Rachel Morin and hopefully bring peace to her family. Since that first day, over 300 community tips have flooded our inboxes and emails. Her death has grabbed local, state, national, and international headlines. Everyone with the same goal, find the killer and bring justice to Rachel. DNA evidence is, is part of nearly every modern day investigation. And in Rachel's case, DNA evidence was collected by our forensic services unit. That DNA was analyzed by the Maryland State Police and it was ran through the National CODIS system. DNA evidence is, I mean, this DNA evidence has come back as a match tied to a home invasion and, insult, and an assault of a young girl in Los Angeles this past March. Unfortunately, that suspect has not been positively identified, but he did leave behind his DNA. Based on the DNA evidence, we consider the individual in the video we obtained from the Los Angeles Police Department and that we are about to show you on our TV screens to be the person that murdered Rachel Morin on August 5th. So we're now gonna show the video. And just so everyone's aware, this video after this press conference, this video will be uh, posted on our social media. All right, you want to play it one more time? Okay. When you're ready, we're, we're going to post it on our social media. Based on our analysis of, of this video and witness observations, we believe the suspect to be approximately 5'9", 160 pounds, and of Hispanic descent. If you have any information about this suspect, we are asking you to please call our detectives at our tip line. And the tip line number is 410-836-7788. And we've also established a dedicated tip email address. And that email address is rmtips at harfordsheriff.org. Again, that's rm, as in Rachel Morin, tips at harfordsheriff.org. We want to make it clear that we believe the suspect acted alone and he doesn't represent the entire Hispanic community of Harford County, who we are now partnering with to identify this suspect. I, now, <clears throat> I know I can speak for the sheriff when I say we are immensely proud of this community. Our community will not be defined by this tragedy. Our community is one that will work together to get the job done and bring this suspect to justice. In the meantime, in the light of this new evidence, I urge our citizens to use caution while walking on our trails and throughout our community. Be alert, walk with a friend, don't allow yourself to be distracted by your cell phone or headphones. And finally, if you see something that makes you feel uncomfortable or that you think is suspicious, act on those instincts and call 911. And lastly, we will continue our increased presence on the Mom Pod Trail. And now I'll open it up to questions. Colonel, do you have any other details on, on what happened in Los Angeles, exactly where or, or, you know, anything about 
what this person did there. So when it comes to the details about Los Angeles, we're, it's, that, that's the information that the Los Angeles Police Department has, and we were just going to refer people to the Los Angeles Police Department to get those details. Okay. Only thing I can tell you is an attack on a young girl. Any word about a um, possible motive? Like, was Rachel missing any money or anything like that? So we are not going to talk about the crime scene at this time, because as I've said in previous interviews, we don't want to talk about the crime scene or what happened at the crime scene, because once we catch this person... We want to make sure we got the right person, and the only people that know what happened on that at that crime scene when we catch the person is us and that suspect. Colonel, so we're not giving any details about that. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you're Colonel, fine. Again, how did you come across, what led you to this particular suspect, this person? So we, we collected DNA from our crime scene. Uh, the Maryland State Police analyzed that, crime, that, that DNA for us, ran it through the national CODIS system, and that came back as a match to, to uh, the crime that occurred in Los Angeles, where they had recovered DNA from this person that you saw in the video. The video that we watched, what it, tell us about it. I mean, what, Los Angeles police released it to you, but what is it? Is it at his home? Is it at the scene of a crime? That is at a home, and that is the suspect leaving the home, the scene of the crime there. And that was a home invasion and assault? Right? Correct. Of a gr little girl, is that what you said? A young girl. That's so I'm going to leave it at a young girl. I don't want to talk about the family there. But uh, it was a young girl in the house that got assaulted. What does this do to the case, Colonel? You have an image now of the person you think is believed to be Correct. responsible for this. What does that do for the case? Well, I think now it kind of leads us down the path that we believe this was a um, person that Rachel probably didn't know. Uh, maybe you, you could say potentially a random act of violence. Uh, and we're hoping that the community now can watch that video. And we also got still pictures that we're going to be putting out and that somebody can identify him. Uh, we don't have any clue where he could be. We don't even know if he's still in Hartford County or in the state of Maryland, because obviously in March he was in California, and then here in August he was here in Maryland. So we don't know if he's still here or not. Do you have any evidence that he was targeting people along that trail, or do you believe this was you know, completely random? Uh, I don't need to be speculating. We do not know. Do you think he may be armed with weapons? I, again, speculation. You describe in front of us 5'9", 160 Hispanic male. Uh, do we have an approximate age? Or? Oh, yeah. We believe he's in his uh, low to mid-20s. Do you know the, the, do you have a date for when the Los Angeles investigation happened? I'm just going to put out that it was in March. Uh, they, the Los Angeles Police Department knows that we're doing this press conference. So if you called them, they would probably be able to give you that information. How rare is this to have a DNA hit from the other side of the country? And, you know, talk, can you talk about that whole process and, and, and how that worked? Uh, I mean, it's the, this is the first time I've seen a hit in a case that I've been involved in that was that far away for a DNA hit. So I wouldn't say that it's I, I'm un, unheard of, but certainly unusual. For the record, you don't have to explain. No, that's what we're looking for. Uh, we don't know. We, have, we know nothing more about him other than he was in L.A. and committed that crime in March, and he was here in August and uh, is the murderer, we believe to be the murderer of Rachel Moore. To follow up on that question, uh, you identified him through DNA evidence um, through this database. So there's no name associated with no. that? No. There's no name associated because it's just evidence from a crime that was submitted. And his DNA, on a, like being arrested and getting DNA, that, none of that is in the system. However, we are working with, we, uh, we have uh, called the FBI, and we are working with some of their uh, DNA experts in their crime lab to try to help us further analyze this DNA. Without compromising the investigation, can you tell us, uh, Rachel was found. Correct. And it was determined that it was a homicide. Correct. Was, uh, was she was there trauma? Was she beaten? What, what was the nature of uh, all, all we've said so far, and I think that we're going to leave it at that, is that it was a violent attack. What's There's your message no to the relationship at all between Rachel and the suspect? Uh, well, again, we just got this information last night. Not that we have been able to determine yet that we, we don't know of any relationship or that they were known to each other before this incident. So I can't really say, but right now, no. Obviously, you know, this is what already has the community on the edge. Like Absolutely. Somebody out here yeah, we want we want our community to be vigilant. Um, obviously, the mom pod trail has been opened since the day after uh, Rachel was discovered. We have a very large amount of deployment on the mom pod trail. We are going to continue that deployment until either this person is caught or 
we believe he's not in the area anymore. But our, our plan is to be vigilant for our community. Our community has been just tremendous with the support they give us and trying to figure out what's going on and calling in tips. And we're hoping that maybe even people from, from L.A. will see this interview and see that this person committed that crime there and maybe somebody knows him. We believe and we hope that somebody who actually knows this suspect that's in the video will be able to identify him for us. Forgive me if you said this. Are you revealing where the DNA was, was found? No. Was it under fingernails? No, we're something? not. We're not going to reveal that. That video is from Los Angeles. That video is from. The yep. That is the suspect leaving the assault that occurred in March in uh, Los Angeles. Uh, I mean, yes. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. And that is just huge news out of Harford County involving the man authorities believed murdered 37-year-old Rachel Moore. And you see a picture of her right now. People have described the crime scene as extremely but uh, brutal, but this information is huge. So if anyone has any tips, they just played the video of the suspect. They say this information came in last night, some new evidence. They collected DNA evidence and it matched a home invasion and an assault that took place back in Los Angeles in March. They have video of the suspect leaving that home in Los Angeles and then in Maryland, this happened in August, so they're saying they don't know how random act of violence. In March, he was in Los Angeles. In August, he's in Maryland. So this is so important to get this video out. And if anyone has any tips, to contact them by email, rmtips at h-a-r-f-o-r-d, sheriff.org. Or you can also call them, 410 836 Seven seven eight eight. They are describing the suspect as five feet nine inches tall, 160 pounds of Hispanic descent. And they are saying this DNA evidence was a match. Big news out there, and hopefully they can apprehend, apprehend this man and bring him in for questioning. But that's the latest on that case there.